Angela. How are you doing tonight? I was just wondering if you are free to talk right now. Good evening, Rochelle. I'm doing okay. Yourself? Yeah, I've already put Nora to bed and I'm not doing anything at the moment, so we can chat. I've never been better. I've got something I can't wait to tell you. Actually, let's play a little game. Take a wild guess as to where I am now. No idea. You could be anywhere. Can you give me a clue at least? Now that I think about it, I haven't seen you around lately. I guess you must be very busy. How nice of your sister to help you out. I've met Judy's husband as well. Frank and I chatted a bit once while we waited for our kids to get released. Frank seems to have a really good relationship with Mark. Oh, you noticed that. Yeah, I let them play with Mark since they don't have children of their own. But that's not the only reason they're taking him to school. I'm not in town right now. Actually, I went on a trip. That's why you haven't seen me. Oh, how nice. So you've been on the trip for a week now? Yes. I needed to get away for a while. We're heading back soon. I should be back in about a week. It's going to take you a week to get back? That's a very long journey. Are you on a cruise by any chance? So, that's why Judy is watching Mark. Bingo! I am on a cruise in the Caribbean right now. And yes, that is right. My sister agreed to look after Mark while I'm away. It's good practice for her and Frank to be around children. So they aren't just helping me out. They get something out of it, too. Oh, how could I forget? I have some fantastic news to tell Mark when I get back, though. Oh, a new father? You met someone? Yeah. It's already been two years since my divorce was finalized. Being a single mother for that long has been quite tough. And I've been looking for someone to be a father to my son. He needs a good male figure to look up to. No one ever really came close to what I was looking for until now. I see. Does that mean you went on this trip with your boyfriend? Yes! That is exactly what that means. He's in the shower now. I messaged you tonight because this news has to do with you as well. You're actually a big part of it. OMG. Are you asking me to be a bridesmaid? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, actually, that would be kind of funny. But no. Oh, okay. Then what could this possibly have to do with me? How should I put this? It might be easier and faster if you took a look at this picture instead of me explaining everything. Oh my god! That's my boyfriend! Isn't he so handsome? I can't take my eye off of him. Wait a minute. That is Tom! My Tom! He's my husband! Yes, that's right! His name is Tom, and he was your husband. He's my boyfriend now. What the hell? He said that he was going on a two-week trip with his friend from school. I thought he was meeting up with a guy, but in reality, he's going on a cheating spree with you. Looks like you've got it all figured out. <laughs> Good for you! Why? Hmm? Why what? Why did it have to be my husband? There are so many other men out there. It had to be Tom. He checked all the boxes. He's tall and handsome. Definitely my type. But most important of all is that he's going to be the next president of his company. The company is also getting big. The stock prices just keep going up. All in all, Tom is the perfect partner for me. We make a great couple. Just look at how good we look together. He already knows how to be a parent, so he's going to be great for Mark, too. My mother has been bugging me about finding another man. She wanted me to find someone who knows how to take care of his family. Don't you think that sounds like Tom? I can't wait for my mom to meet him. She's going to be so happy and so proud of me. Rochelle, listen. I don't think that that was what your mother was talking about. 
You're supposed to go after single men, not married ones. What's wrong with you? Why would you think that this is okay? How could you just tell me so casually that you're cheating with my husband? How dare you put your hands on my man? Calm down. He won't be yours for much longer. When you divorce him, he'll be single again, so then he'll be mine. It's only a matter of time now. What a messed up way of thinking. Your new man should have been single from the beginning. You're just a homewrecker now. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter what you say anymore. It's too late. Tom's heart and his body belong to me. He is already mine. You skank! I'm not going to let you get away with this. Sure. You can say whatever you want if it makes you feel better, but it won't change anything. But don't you worry, though. We're not going to fight over alimony. He'll pay whatever amount you want. Tom will become the next CEO, and then we're going to get married. We'll be so rich that your alimony will be peanuts in comparison. You can't put a price on true love and happiness anyway. This isn't just about money. That might be the only thing you care about, but not me. Well, it isn't the only thing, but definitely a very big thing. Don't overcomplicate things. I want everything to go smoothly. Tom and I still have a week before we're back. Take a few deep breaths and think about it. Consider everything that I said. I'm sure that we'll all be able to get what we want in the end. You two better get your butts back here immediately. There's no way that I can just sit here quietly after you drop this bombshell on me. Sorry, but I can't do that. Even if I wanted to, it's out of my hands. I'm not the one captaining this cruise ship. But oh, you've given me a good idea! Tom and I should get a yacht. It would be a great way to celebrate our new life together. Rochelle? Seriously? Of course I'm serious. I always take my happiness seriously. You're going to have to do the same too very soon. No one likes a clingy woman, so move on quickly for everyone's sake. By the way, don't bother trying to contact Tom. What? And how are you going to stop me from doing that? I'm not the one that will be stopping you. Did he not tell you? He won't be responding to any of your messages while he's on this trip. Don't tell me you were the one that made him say that. Who else would it be? I didn't want any distractions while we were on our lover's getaway holiday, so I told him to turn his phone off. No way. Does he know that you're telling me about the affair? No, not yet. But does it really matter who you heard this from? I know he's planning on telling you a week after we get back to not make it seem suspicious. But I thought that I might as well speed up the process and make it easier for both you and him. So you told me all this on your own without consulting Tom first. You've gone rogue. So I might have jumped the gun here. Sue me. But it won't matter anyway. I'm sure Tom will be happy with what I did. He's going to be so grateful that I helped him get the hard part over with. Actually, I think he might even cry and thank me. I can just picture that in my head. I think that's enough time spent talking to you. I'm going to turn off my phone now and spend some uninterrupted time with Tom. See you in a week, Angela. Bye! Hello. This is Judy Foreman. I'm Rochelle's sister. We met each other a few times at the kindergarten. Thank you very much for giving me your number. Oh, good morning, Judy. I'm sorry for contacting you out of the blue, but I haven't been able to contact my sister at all. I don't suppose you've talked to her? I understand that two of you are close. You haven't heard from her? Well, a week ago she said that she was going on a trip with a man that she has been seeing. But I haven't seen from her since then. We've had a family emergency and I've been trying to contact her but I can't get a hold of her. I've tried everything. I've texted her and called her many times already but I haven't heard anything back. She hasn't even read any of my messages. 
All my emails have gone unanswered, too. I know she went on a cruise, so maybe she doesn't have internet? But honestly, I'm at a loss. Do you know of any other way that I can get a hold of her? So, you haven't been able to connect with her at all? Hmm. Yeah. I'm very concerned, and under normal circumstances, I would have gone to you for help, but as I've said, it's a family emergency. I've been contacting all the people that know Rochelle. Well, actually, I did hear from her, but it seems she's turned off her cell phone. Really? Why would she do that? She doesn't want to be bothered on her trip with her boyfriend. I'm sorry to say this, but I think the both of them will be unreachable until they get back to town. Oh, goodness. Do you happen to have any more information? Like another number? I don't think it's a good idea for both of them to have their phones off for that long. From the way you've been talking, I don't think you know anything about that man that she has been seeing. Yes, you're right. I haven't met him yet. I don't even know his name. Rochelle said that I will meet him soon when they announce their engagement, though. I see. So, Rochelle seems to be aware of how bad it would look for her when the truth gets out. It seems like she feels some shame about it. I'm sorry, but I don't understand what you mean by that. Is there something that I need to know? Do you know who this mystery man is? The man that she claims to be her boyfriend is actually my husband. His name is Tom, and we are still married. Oh my goodness! What? Is it true that she's been having an affair with a married man? Yes, that is right. She even sent me a picture of them together on the cruise, so there is no doubt that it is real. I think she was going to tell you the details about her relationship when she got back. On behalf of my sister, I am truly very sorry for what she did. I swear I had no idea. I can't believe that she's doing this again. Again? She's done this before? I guess there's no point in hiding it from someone like you. Rochelle's cheating was the reason her ex divorced her. I guess she's fallen into the same pattern again. My nephew is actually a product of that affair. I haven't met Mark's biological father before. But I heard that he was also a married man. He doesn't want anything to do with Mark. I feel so bad that Mark has to be caught up in Rochelle's problems. He's a sweet boy, and he deserves to be in a stable home. I see. So, this has been a pattern for Rochelle. I'm really sorry. There's no need for you to apologize. You didn't do anything wrong. But she is my sister. She kept you in the dark about it, though. She asked you to take care of Mark while she went on her trip. You're just an innocent bystander in her plot. Thank you for seeing it that way. I honestly don't know what to say to you. It's fine. But actually, if you don't mind me asking, you said that you need to contact Rochelle because of a family emergency? Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, it is an emergency. Actually, our mother has been hospitalized for a long time now, and she took a turn for the worse last night. Oh my goodness! Really? Is she going to be okay? We don't know, but the doctor says that her time might be close, and it could happen at any time. That's why I have to tell Rochelle. She needs to come back quickly. I'm so sorry to hear that. I guess it really isn't a good time for us to be texting like this for a long time. My uncle is looking after my mother now while I'm contacting people. But still, time must be really precious for you right now. I'm sorry for taking up your time and telling you something so unsavory. No, it's okay. I was the one that asked. You've been a great help to me. I think this is the last straw for Rochelle. I'm going to be cutting her out of my life. I don't have the energy to deal with her. She can do whatever she wants from now on. It won't be any of my business anymore. I understand. It's a shame that she lost a nice sister like you. Thank you for your kind words. Now that I have the information that I need, I think it's time to get back to my mother now. I know that you said it isn't my fault, but I'm still sorry that my sister caused you so much trouble. I hope that everything will work out for you in the end. Thank you, and I hope your mother can pull through. Hi, Anne.
Angela. So, how are you doing? We just got off the ship. We're going to be flying back soon and we'll arrive tonight. I just turned on my phone and thought that I would see what you've been up to. I had such a fun time on this trip. The memories will definitely last me a lifetime. Tom and I did so much together. We are just so lucky and so happy. I can't wait to spend the rest of our lives together. This must be so hard for you to hear, but as soon as you face the truth, the easier it will be on you. Sorry for having such an amazing time with your husband. By the way, were you able to pick up those divorce papers? We can get those signed very soon. I just want to marry this man right away and be his beautiful, rich wife. But above all else, no one will be able to say anything about our relationship. I can't wait for us to be official. My mother is going to be so happy for me when she sees me. She will finally stop pestering me. This isn't a really good time for me to talk. Actually, it's not a good time for you either. I'm probably not the best person to hear this news from, but... I'm at your mother's funeral right now. I can't talk for that long. I don't want to be rude. What? That is not funny at all. What is wrong with you? You don't even know my mother. How dare you say something like that to me? Hey! Why aren't you answering me? You need to explain yourself this instant. I'll contact you again when we are done seeing your mother off. Like I said, it's rude for me to be doing this now. I need to turn off my phone. I'll contact you when I can. Bye. Wait! Angela! You can't do that to me! Don't just shut me out like this! What are you trying to do? How dare you bring my mother into this? You have such a sick sense of humor. You're an awful person! You need to pick up! Don't leave me hanging here! Angela, turn your phone back on this instant! You nasty woman! Rochelle. Angela! Finally! You have some nerve doing that! Do you have any idea what a mess you left me in? Now explain yourself right now! What is really happening? I called Judy, but she didn't pick up either. I want only the truth. No more lies. Of course she couldn't. She was busy taking care of everything there. Earlier, the poor thing was sitting up there and trying her best to keep herself together. I'm glad that Frank is here to help her. Mark is here too. The poor thing. He must be so confused as to what is going on. Judy is still busy. She doesn't have the time to even look at her phone right now. Huh? My son is there too? Are you still lying to me? Of course your son is here. He lost his grandmother. By the way, I heard that you lost your father a long time ago. And the same thing happened when he died. Even though you're the oldest in the family, they weren't able to get a hold of you back then either. Your sister took over for you then, and she's doing the best that she can right now too. So... All her messages about Mom. They are true? Mom is gone? There is no way that I would joke about someone's death. That is a completely heartless thing to do. It's not a prank? Of course not. This is about your mother. I wouldn't pull a prank like that about anyone's mother. It's serious business. The night you turned off your phone was the night that her condition took a turn for the worse. I heard that for a few days she was fighting for her life. But she found peace a few days ago. They said that she passed away in her sleep. That was what your sister told me when she called me the next day. You're lying. This can't be happening. She can't be gone now. Everything was going to be better. I was going to get married again and we were all going to be happy. We were going to laugh and smile about it. My mother was going to be so proud of me when she knew that I was going to be a rich wife. 
I did all this for her. Oh, I see. That was your motivation? That's why you had to go and steal my husband? Yes, exactly! My mom was so upset when I got divorced. I'd never seen her as angry as she was then. I was always her favorite and she had never even raised her voice at me before that. Of course she would be angry at you. That's why I was going to make her happy again by marrying a rich guy. She was going to be well taken care of. She was never going to have to worry about money again. I was going to set her up in a really nice place. I was so close to being able to tell her. Do you know what, Rochelle? That wasn't what your mother wanted for you. How dare you say that to me? What do you know about my mother? You don't even know her. I'm just passing on what Judy told me your mother said. Huh? What Judy said? Your mother knew that you were playing around with a married man again. What? How did you know? I guess you can call it a mother's intuition. By the way, your mother left a will. A will? When can I get to see it? It will be officially open soon, apparently. I don't think it's my place to be telling you anymore. I think it would be better if you heard the rest from Judy. It's time for me to pay my last respects. Um, Judy? Are you there? Hello, Rochelle. I see that you have finally turned on your cell phone. It's too late, though. Yeah, so, um, about Mom. How generous of you to finally care. I just got to the crematorium. What? It's happening now? Mom wanted to be cremated, so we're all in the waiting room. We're just waiting for it to be done. Then I'll need to collect her ashes. So it's all true. Did you talk to Angela? Did she tell you? I knew you were going to talk to her first. I knew you were going to gloat to Angela about your trip with Tom. She's the one who had to break the news to you about Mom. Did I get any of that wrong? How do you know that? You got it completely right. Yeah, because it went exactly like I thought it would. You don't change. By the way, don't bother coming here now. What? Don't bother going to my own mother's funeral? It's too late anyway. This is just a repeat of Dad's funeral. I don't want you here. No one does. I wasn't going to tell you where it was in the first place, and I'm not going to tell you where we're putting her ashes. Don't even come to the house anymore. You're not welcome there. Don't even come to get your stuff. I'm just going to send it to you later. Judy, why are you saying that? You're going to stop me from seeing my own mother. You know what you did. I don't have to explain myself. You don't even care, so don't act like you do now. But Judy, Angela said that there was a will. Yeah, there is. So that's what you wanted to know. I should have realized sooner. We will be reading it out soon. You don't need to be there for it. Mom and I had a chat about you before she passed. She knew that you were seeing someone. Her final words about you was that she was afraid that you will never change, no matter what she said to you. You never seem to learn from your mistakes, so you keep making the same ones. She told me she changed her will. She's leaving everything to me. And I get nothing? You don't deserve anything. She looked so sad when she told me. Why? Why am I being left with nothing? Do you have any idea what I did for her? I was going to tell her that I'm marrying a rich guy. He is everything that she would have wanted for me. If she knew that I was seeing him, then why did she do this to me? You really can't see why? No, I can't. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't think she or anyone cares if you married someone rich or not. That wasn't what she was mad about. Then, what more could she have wanted? She wanted you to grow up, be responsible, and become a decent person. You were going to tell her about your new boyfriend, but I'm sure you weren't planning on telling her that he was a married man. She knew anyway, 
and she was mad. But it was for her. No more buts. The moment you made a move on a married man, you did something wrong. Not only did you hurt our mother, but you destroyed another family. You ruined their lives so that you could be happy. But mom always said that I should do whatever that makes me happy. She wasn't telling you to do that at the expense of other people. Mom was so disappointed that you didn't understand that. She wasn't telling you to be selfish when she said that to you. What? She was disappointed in me? Even after all that I achieved? Yes, she was. When you hurt others to obtain your own happiness, that happiness won't last long. That means even though you think you're happy now, it's just going to end up hurting you later. If you keep repeating the same pattern that you've been doing, you'll never be truly happy. Mom couldn't stop lamenting about you. Lamenting for me? What does that even mean? Even if you say that now, it's too late. There's nothing that I can do about it now. Please don't make me repeat myself over and over again. How many times does someone have to tell you before you get it? We've been telling you all this time, but it never gets through to you. You just hear what you want to hear, but you never understand how mom felt or how other people feel. So now, here we are again. This time, it's with Angela's husband. It's the same pattern as two years ago when Adam left you. But it's different this time! I don't care what excuse you have. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm tired of hearing them, and I'm tired of saying the same thing to you. But Judy! No! Don't even try. I'm done with you. I'm cutting you out of my life. What are you saying? I'm your sister! Not for much longer. I had to tell all our relatives what you did, too. Everyone was asking about you, and I wasn't going to lie for you. You won't be able to go to any of them for help. How could you do that? One more thing. We're going to take custody of Mark. We plan on adopting him. We're going to set up a trust for him using some of Mom's money. What? You can't do that. He's in the will and I'm not. He's mine. I'm his mother. They won't just give him to you. You really think you can call yourself a mother? Even though you always leave everything to me? I've taken care of Mark more than you have. I have not! I've done everything for that boy! He barely knows you, and I bet you don't even know a single thing about him. I do know! What proof do you have that I don't know about Mark? You don't! Or else you wouldn't have tried to throw away his favorite blanket the other day. You thought it was an old rag, but for Mark he needs his blanket to help him sleep. But it's such an old thing. It's ripped in so many places. Do you need more proof than that? Frank and I already decided on the matter. We'll have someone contact you about the details of the matter later. I need to get back to everyone. They're going to wonder where I am. Take care of yourself. Angela? Are you there? Yeah, I'm back. I heard that you talked to your sister. So now I'm going to say my piece. What is it now? I'll give you what you want. I'm going to divorce Tom. But I thought that you should know that he isn't rich. What? He is rich? The current CEO of the company is my father. I thought his father was the CEO. No, I am an only child. I met Tom in the company and he showed great potential for leadership. So my father decided to prepare him to be the next CEO. What? He only married into the family? Yes, that's right. Tom's hard work has put him in the running as the next CEO, but it's not like he's the only option. I am also in the running. Or there are plenty of other promising people who could also take that seat. My father still hasn't made his final decision on what he will do with the company. That means that nothing has been finalized. Yes. Tom won't automatically be the next CEO when my father steps down. No way. But I thought he was going to be appointed very soon. Unlikely. Because of this, Tom is being fired. He's being fired because of an affair? Of course he is. 
There's no way he would have been able to stay after cheating on me. Even if I wasn't the one that he was cheating on, his dishonesty would have gotten him removed from the shortlist. That would make him a nobody! That's what he gets for going on dates during work hours and hindering the work process. That alone would have been enough to get him fired. This can't be happening! That would mean that he won't have anything! No job and no money! That's right. You've both brought this on to yourselves. I've wasted enough time talking to you. Next time you hear from me, it'll be through my lawyer. I will be suing you for ruining my marriage. You're suing me? Yes. Don't make it harder than it needs to be, okay? You're really going to do that to me? I just lost my mother and now you're going to sue me? I'm going to be losing my son as well! Come on and show me some compassion! Don't you think I've been through enough for one day? I don't want to be lectured by you about compassion. I'm just saying to please show me some consideration here. I will show as much consideration as you've shown me. I will sue you for the maximum amount I can get. You can't do that! Just watch me. That's all I have to say. Goodbye. A lot of things happened in that one week that made it fly by really quickly. I filed for divorce and kicked Tom out of the house. I had to explain to our daughter why Tom wasn't coming home. Tom confessed that his relationship to Rochelle was nothing more than a fling, but that didn't matter to me. I didn't care what his intentions were. His confession helped to speed up the whole process. While we were having our hearings, Rochelle and Judy were having theirs in family court. No matter how hard Rochelle tried to fight, she still had to give up custody of her child to Judy and Frank. Tom blames Rochelle for telling me about everything that day and ruining his life. They are no longer together. They both have to pay child support and Tom owes me a lot of alimony. I didn't care about Tom enough to keep tabs on what he did after losing his job and his family. I do know that he had to move into a cheap apartment because the triple whammy of child support, alimony, and losing his job left him just about penniless. Rochelle lost all her family over one very poor decision. She still doesn't know where her mother's ashes are. Since the last time I saw her, she has only messaged me once, saying how lonely she is and that she doesn't want to be alone anymore. I left her message on red and then blocked her. She will never be my problem again. My father decided to name me as the next CEO, so I'm pretty busy these days between that and taking care of my daughter. I'm not in a rush to look for a new father for her, but I'm always open to meeting someone. I'm going to make sure that he's single before dating him.